How many books have you written? 40. How many have you sold? 300 million. How many have been turned into films? Nine. What's your latest book called? It's called The Reckoning. What are you best known for? Uh, I would say writing legal thrillers. Why are you here in Deauville? To receive the Lucien Barrier Literary Prize. Please, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm John Grisham. John Grisham, hello. Hello. You've Bonjour. You've said that Camino Island is a, a way to stick it to the critics who've said your books were beach reads all yeah. over these years. This is literally a beach read. It's set at the beach. And it's also a bit of a vacation for you because you've taken a bit of time off from being the king of the legal thriller. You take us to a sleepy island. Mm -hmm. Life revolves around a bookstore there. Tell us a bit more. Well, I tried to write uh, an entire book with no lawyers, and I almost made it. I got down to the very end and I finally had to have a lawyer involved, or a couple of them, so uh, I do get tired of writing about lawyers occasionally. When The Firm came out <clears throat> 25 years ago, um, several critics said this is nothing but, you know, this is a beach book. It came out, the book came out in March. And uh, it didn't really irritate me because the critics have never been kind anyway, so I don't read the critics anymore. But I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll show you a beach book. This is the ultimate beach book. In Camino Island, you immerse the reader in this delightful universe of writers, some mm. successful, some not successful. Mm. Do you have a literary icon? Uh, not really. Uh, there are certain writers that I uh, enjoy reading, greatly admire, uh, get lost in their books. Uh, Steinbeck was the first one when I was a student in high school. Uh, John Le Carre is, is a favorite. Uh, I, ha I mean, I have my favorites, uh, but no one that I try to imitate, no one I try to, um, you know, get inspiration from. Do you have time to read? Uh, when I'm writing, I don't read fiction. Uh, I, I'd read a bunch of nonfiction. Books that would bore you, books about the criminal justice system and the prison system and the juvenile justice system and all the things I write about. Wrongful convictions and the death penalty and mass incarceration and sentencing disparities and all these legal issues that keep me awake at night. And that's where I draw my inspiration. That's where I get my ideas. The Camino Island also explores um, this massive gulf between popular writers and literary mm -hmm. writers. The books that everyone talks about in the literary establishment that don't sell and then the books that get panned that do sell. Yeah. Uh, do you have any insight into what's going on? I don't think about that. When I write a book, I'm trying to first and foremost entertain. That's my job. Not write something that people are going to be reading 100 years from now. I don't care what they read when, after I'm dead. Um, I want to write a book that people really enjoy. and is suspenseful and compelling and turns the pages and satisfies whatever they're looking for. That's my, that's my job. That's, that, that's not even a job, it's what I want to do as a writer. Nine of your books have been made into films starring the likes of Julia Roberts, Gene Hackman, um, Susan Sarandon and Dustin Hoffman. The Firm was the first adaptation starring Tom Cruise about a lawyer who's lured into a law firm that isn't exactly as it seems in a different life, you were a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Did you actually ever hear about this happening or did you just make it up? No, it, uh, almost everything goes back to reality. When I was in law school, a close friend of mine was the top student in our class. And he had interviews everywhere. And he came back from one recruiting trip, uh, this, is, this is 40 years ago, or 35 years ago. And he said, um, there was something odd about that firm, small firm. I got the impression that once you join the firm, you could never leave. Nobody leaves this firm. I didn't like it. It's like it's owned by the mafia or something. And uh, that stuck. It sold 7 million copies. It sold 20 million copies. <laughs> but who's counting, right? <laughs> Those early books, um, the F A Time to Kill, The Firm, The Pelican Brief, and The Client that have big movies, they're still selling. They're all pushing between 15 and 20 million copies in 50 some odd languages around the world. So uh, that's sobering. Racism is a massive theme in the book. You grew up in the deep south. 
-hmm. How much was racism part of your life growing up? Because I mean, it's still a problem there today, but it was a, a bigger problem then. It was not even a problem, it was a way of life. We didn't care about the mistreatment of blacks because we had never cared about it. It was generational, it was DNA, it was what, the way we were, you know, so that's the way we were raised. And um, it's very hard to overcome that. We are making a lot of progress. We've made a ton of progress in the United States. We had so far to go, but it's still, you know, it still flares up daily somewhere in America, some, you know, racial conflict, and you think, how do we deal with this? And we have a president who's a racist, who has no tolerance, you know, who never has shown any sympathy for uh, minorities, and he's too stupid to realize it. He doesn't realize, he, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. He doesn't realize he's, you know, um, a racist. Uh, so that's compounding our problems. And you weren't, I know, enamored with Barack Obama. You supported Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. But for those of us outside America, can you explain Donald Trump to us? No. 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 He's a fear monger who appealed to um, <laughs> a minority of the voters, not a majority. But he was able to uh, appeal to pr primarily the anti-immigration folks who fear you know, fear, 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 fear. They're afraid of losing their job, they're afraid of losing their home, their career, their whatever, and it was fear. You grew up believing in the death penalty. Mm -hmm. It's a theme that you talk about um, in the chamber. Can you tell us about the moment when you changed your mind? Yeah, I was on, uh, I was on death row in Mississippi, and back, this is 19, 92, I was researching the chamber, and at that time, the method of execution was the gas chamber. Well, before they take the condemned man into the death room, they have him in the holding room, which is right next door. It's a small, dark room with a bunk. And he spends his last hour there with the chaplain. And I was in that room, and, and the chaplain and I were, uh, we'd got to know each other. We were, we were, uh, we could talk. It was dark, and it was quiet, and, um, he said, you're a Christian, aren't you? I said, I am. He said, do you think Christ would sanction what we do here? Do you think Christ would endorse what we do here? And I said, I can't imagine that he would be in favor of this. And he said, I don't think so either. This is not right. If killing people is wrong, and we all agree that it is, how can we as a state maintain the right to kill. And that was the moment. During the book, there are lots of discussions uh, about books at the dinner parties that take place. I want to recreate one of the conversations with you in Camino Island, where one writer is suggesting genres to another as a way to inspire her to write something. Right. Uh, imagine I'm suggesting to you then, murder mysteries. Yeah, it sells. It's good stuff. It's the people love to read them. Suspense thrillers. Even better. That's what I like. That's what I like to read. Spies espionage. Uh, I can't write that stuff because I don't know a lot about that. I'll leave that to the espionage writers. Horror. I uh, can't do that. I'll leave that to Stephen King. Political intrigue. Love that. Love that. I mean, I'd love to write it. And romance. Yeah, I'm not very good at that. <laughs> men, men don't write good romance. Porn. I have no idea. <laughs> well, I don't write sex. Uh, I've written a couple of sex scenes in the past, and my wife just, you know, screamed with laughter. As she, <laughs> she said, you know, men can't write sex scenes. And so I finally got to the point in Camino Island where the two main characters are, you know, they're, they're in bed. It's time to do something. It took a long time to get them there. And I thought, what am I supposed to, am I supposed to describe <laughs> body parts now? I, you know, what am I supposed to do here? And I, you know, I failed miserably, so, I, you know, they woke up the next morning. How significant is it to you to have written a beach read set at the beach and here you are at a beach festival winning a, a huge literary award? Well, the great thing about the award here, it's not, uh, I, I, the, the award recognizes good writers, good books. It's not highbrow, lowbrow, midbrow. It's, it's all inclusive. You would never have an award like this in the US. The awards there are controlled by um, the literary mafia, 
<laughs> they, they don't, you know, they don't like my books. John Grisham, thank you. Thanks my pleasure, so thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. John Grisham!